Hey guys, as always, thanks for tuning in. Jay Helmsing here. Today I'm going to give you guys the first update on Project One Gun. And as you'll notice, it is not July 1st yet, right? It is not the time that I said I'm going to start doing this, but obviously, if this is going to be my one and only gun, I'm going to do some training, some practice, and some reliability testing with it before I do that full time, okay? So, uh, in this process, you know, some, some significant things have happened already that I want to start sharing with you guys. Um, so, I'll tell you a little bit uh, about my, my shooting with it so far. I'm keeping this in a log book so I can tell you exactly what has been fired and when. Uh, so it started yesterday, I went to an indoor range and I did do some accuracy testing with it just to make sure the sights were on and that I could be accurate with the stock plastic Glock sights. So uh, with the stock sights on the gun, I was extremely accurate and you guys can see that over on my, my Instagram page, it's Jay Helmsing. If you guys haven't added me, be sure to do that because I'm going to be posting a lot of my first person shooter type uh, you know, segments and also some, uh, some photos of me doing the testing and the experimenting with this over there. Uh, it's just a lot more convenient to do it that way instead of trying to you know, plaster them into these videos. So anyway, uh, so that went pretty well. That was 100 rounds of Sig Sauer Elite Performance Ammunition. I wanted to shoot some uh, rather full test stuff first just to make sure that we were going to get through that no problem. So uh, good job there. Very accurate. I uh, was able to knock the center out of the bullseye with the first 20 rounds. Uh, so yeah, everything went well, right? So fast forward to today, I took it out and I was going to put down a ton of rounds with it. I think I brought out somewhere around 350 rounds with me today. I uh, only made it through about uh, 170 of those rounds today and I did have my first failure with the gun, okay? So um, here we go, all right? Not even started yet. Glock 19, the pinnacle of reliability to some, uh, has already failed. Uh, not necessarily a, a failure uh, as uh, you would expect it, but a failure of parts on the gun, okay? So here we go. As you guys can see, I am carrying this concealed right now, and uh, you're gonna see some funky business going on really quickly with this bad boy. And I'll tell you uh, some other findings that I've already experienced with it. So, make sure we're super duper clear because this was just chambered and uh, being carried by me. So, here we go. Here is the Glock 19 Gen 5 after day two at the range. You guys can probably already see what's missing from this picture. Uh, so the, the, the premise of this project was to take a stock gun and leave it as stock as I could, try to make it through a year carrying it completely stock, okay? When I went to buy this gun, they did have the new Amerigo, Ameriglo Bold series. Uh, Glock 19 Gen 5 and that is an option for the Gen 5 pistols to go with the Ameriglow Bold series as they call it and they come with uh, metal Ameriglow sights installed from the factory. That is an awesome, awesome upgrade and I'm thrilled that Glock has gone that route. Uh, however, I think that should be not called the Ameriglow Bold series. I think it should be called the Stock Glock series and they should just put it on all their guns as they come out of the factory and save everybody a lot of time and hassle with replacing these plastic sights. So. Uh, with my two pennies out of the way on that, I'm going to tell you my philosophy behind these sights. First off, I do not like the sight picture that I get from stock Glock sights. I don't like the little U-notch. I do not like, uh, you know, the busy rear like you're going to see here. I don't like putting the ball in the bucket. It's just, it's strictly a Glock thing. Uh, some of the early CZ P07s had the same sort of thing, but it just never really caught on. I'm much more of a traditional partridge sight guy where I just want, you know, plain black, I want to put that line up there and you know just kind of match the height equal height equal light and uh, pull the trigger you know that's what I'm used to doing and you can definitely do that with these uh, stock Glock sights that's what I did yesterday and sighting it in and I was very accurate with it um, however it's just not a preferred sight picture I'm not picking it up very quickly uh, as opposed to some other type of sights you know some sights that maybe I'm more uh, accustomed to so with that said, with these sites, I decided, you know, I'm going to leave them in until something catastrophic happens with them and see how long they last. And the reason is uh, one of my biggest complaints about the Glock sites and specifically their night sites is that they're tight. This rear notch here is an extremely tight notch, especially on the more compact or subcompact guns. Uh, there's just not a whole lot of wiggle room and you really can't see much light at all. And uh, I'm just not used to that sight picture. But on these guns, on the Gen 5s, they did open up that rear notch a little bit. They did make an improvement to these plastic sights. And uh, they opened up that rear notch. So you do have a very good sight picture with these plastic sights. So I uh, went out to the tactical range today, did some moving, some shooting, did some, some um, uh, drills one-handed. And I also did some uh, reload drills 
I uh, did some one shots from the holster and uh, lastly what, what TKO'd this site here was I was doing malfunction drills and I uh, was using a uh, some, some dummy rounds and some of my dummy rounds are reloaded dummy rounds that I have painted a certain color and they don't have a primer in them, no powder or anything and then some of them are traditional snap caps. So at any rate as I was shooting through the string doing a malfunction drill, I was you know working on clearing it out. What I've noticed with the Gen 5 Glock, specifically with this new Marksman barrel, and I've not heard anybody talk about this, is that the throat in this barrel is tighter than a traditional Glock uh, barrel. So the older Glocks uh, would eat almost anything. You'd never have a problem with that. However, they were kind of, you know, you guys remember the whole kaboom thing. Um, especially with the 40 Glocks just not being real supportive and things like that. Well, they did tighten these up. They're much more supportive in the chamber area. However, uh, they're also a little bit tighter in the chamber area. And what I've noticed is that certain ammunition is just really stiff. It like gets stuck in this gun. So in other words, as you go to chamber round or as the gun chambers the next round, as part of the cycle of shooting, uh, that the it will be basically stuck in this position because it is such a tight fit in this chamber here. Now, obviously, if you reload, you do some drop testing and you make sure that it's going to fit in your chamber. And I've not had an issue with reloads or anything. But with the dummy round that I used, it did not fit in this 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 chamber correctly. So what happened was it went all the way forward. I was able to um, obviously have a dead trigger at that point because it was a snap cap. So pulled the trigger. It went click. Nothing happened. And uh, then I went to, you know, do my malfunction drill. So tap, went to rack, and as I went to rack, I'm just like, oh no, oh no. And if you guys have been in this situation with, uh, you know, having a, uh, a spent round lodged in there, uh, it's a pain. And it's one of the few malfunctions where you can't, there's not a real quick remedial action. Like you, if you can't, you know, develop some real pressure, some real force to get this thing to move out of the way and, and open that, that chamber up, then you've got to do some pretty brutal things to the gun. So uh, with that said, um, I could not get it, you know, could not open it with uh, just free handing it. So I went to the nearest ledge just kind of instinctively, uh, dropped a magazine uh, so it would not accidentally load another round. And then I started doing some racking procedures with the slide to get it open. Well, the obvious remedial action for that is to use the edge of the rear rear slide, uh, the edge of the rear side, I should say, on this slide, because there's nothing else to catch on, and basically you're racking it, you know, off of a table or something like that, trying to get this to force open. So as I did that, I put about half a pound of pressure, and uh, this bad boy here, this rear sight, uh, just basically went flying into the into outer space. Uh, so obviously. Uh, I wasn't thinking about it being a plastic side. I wasn't trying to damage it. Uh, but, you know, during that process, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, uh, you know, basically zero pressure at all sent this thing, you know, into orbit. So um, big concern, big concern for me. I knew it could happen. I've had these things break. I've had them narf off. I've had them uh, basically pop off just from dropping them before and things like that. But uh, I'd never had one just kind of, you know, during a malfunction drill, just, oh my gosh, no rear sight now. And uh, this is exactly what the gun looked like after that. Still see the retainer in there. Um, I didn't have any way to fix it at the range. So basically uh, what I did is I ended up getting the, the, uh, the slide open by, uh, you know, then banging it on the front side here. And, uh, you know, some of this, some of the slide meat here, just really putting some force. Uh, finally did get the cylinder to open, uh, freed the chamber out, got that dummy round out of there. And then, uh, you know, the gun works fine after that, okay? Uh, but yeah, big concern, really big concern because I'm carrying this gun as a defensive weapon as well. So when I run into those malfunction drills, not only A, would that not have been kosher in a gunfight if I happened to get a, a round that just didn't fit correctly, uh, that would not have been cool to try to find some kind of a ledge first off. And then, uh, oh yeah, I don't have a rear sight and I still have a, a round stuck in the, in the uh, chamber. Uh, bad time, right? Throw the gun and run time. Um, so not only did that did that happen, but afterwards, you know, carrying this home as a defensive pistol, I had basically a uh, you know a front sight, and that was pretty much it. And I will post some footage on my, my Instagram account of me shooting the gun in this manner. You can hit reliably. I find if you plane out the slide, you can hit reliably with uh, really no sights on there. But uh, not something I would want to set myself up to do in a defensive situation. So yeah, failure number one in the books: uh, junk plastic sights. Um, I don't know, Glock, what's it gonna take, right? I have been a huge proponent of throwing those things in the garbage ever since they came out. I've got literally probably six sets of spare Glock sights just laying around because that's the first thing I do to a Glock pistol. Um, 
they're just not fit for defensive use. They're, they're not. They're not fit for anything less than probably target practice, and they're just not good target sites at that. They're not adjustable, you know, uh, they're just, they're fragile sites. Uh, do not, do not, do not like polymer sites, and I think this just kind of shows us why that is a, a problem. So, uh, you know, lesson number one, obviously upgrade your sites or get the Ameriglo Bold series uh, from, from the get-go. Uh, no sense in having this on your gun if you're going to use it and depend on it. Uh, your life is going to be, you know, dependent on these things sticking on there, which are obviously just held on by the grace of God most of the time, okay? Uh, heard somebody describe them once as dovetail protectors for the slide, and that's pretty much what they are. They're, they're just subpar. They really are. Um, other than that, you know, uh, the, the next big lesson here is that the chambers, the cylinder um, in the chamber specifically, is uh, very tight on these guns. It's much tighter than the other Glocks. Um, and I'm, we're talking about, you know, uh, thousands of millimeters and stuff, but everything kind of adds up when you're talking about ammunition. So uh, my SIG ammo that I carry, my department SIG ammo, uh, does fit tight in these guns. And uh, I have not had an issue where I couldn't get it open, but I have, have had some issues where it was kind of stiff. Uh, to clear that that round out of the cylinder so uh, these do have tighter tighter chambers uh, than other Glocks did and you might might have a little bit of persnickety ammo issues with that now it has not ever affected the functioning of the gun itself and granted it was a dummy round that it really choked on so uh, that is not you know anything you'd have in your gun during a defensive situation or anything like that uh, but yeah take these things for what they're worth those are the first two things that I've noticed um, other than that, the Glock has shot uh, completely reliably as I would expect. So no issues with anything else. Um, points like a Glock, shoots like a Glock, has been functioning like a Glock, it's not been cleaned or lubricated or anything like that. Uh, I will do that at regular intervals, it's not going to be like a torture test or see how long I can beat on it because I am carrying the gun as well, so I don't want to set myself up to be a, a, a statistic. But uh, yeah, it's, it's been great uh, functionally except for the sights. So I'm going to go ahead and put these sights on. These are some uh, Ameriglo Hackathorn sights that I just had laying around. Uh, so just know, uh, you know, the, the goal of this was to maintain the stock uh, functionality and the stock um, uh, basically status, the stock state of the gun as long as possible. And uh, until, you know, I found a need, a reason that you'd have to change something. And I think, uh, you know, undeniably, this is a reason to change these out. So, um, you know, just take that for what it's worth. My first update here. I appreciate you guys tuning into this. I appreciate you guys following along as we go along this journey. journey. And uh, I will be updating you with round count, with, uh, you know, all these different functional updates as I'm noticing things happen. And I will tell you uh, real quick shooting impressions, transitioning back to the Glock 19 platform from shooting a lot of SIG guns. Uh, a couple things I've noticed is that I am, I am a little bit rusty on the mechanics of the Glock. In other words, I, I missed some shots that I think I would make with my SIG pistols. However, uh, just in a few, ra few hundred rounds, I have noticed that I'm coming online much faster. So I do think that some of that training has transferred and it's, it's uh, able to be used in different platforms. However, it's just a familiarity thing at this point. So I'm getting more used to the Glock. I would say that I'm probably, if, if I'm on my SIG pistols at 100%, I'm probably around 80, 85% right now on the Glock platform. Uh, so, uh, you know, again, those skills are transferable, it seems. However, there's a familiarity, uh, you know, curve that I'm trying to work my way over. And it seems like I'm doing that fairly quickly, but there are some hitches in that process. So just to update you guys on that, I will get these bad boys installed. So uh, the further installments will have these uh, Ameriglo Hackathorn sights on there for the remainder of the test. Thanks again for tuning in. And as always, continue to watch these videos, read, learn, develop, go to the range, practice your craft. Until next time, Jay Helmsing.